This is going to be Genesis chapter 7, and we're going to talk about the subject of being a Noah in your generation. In Acts 2.40, it says, And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. We're living in a very wicked time. And as a born-again believer, you need to stick out as a Noah in this untoward generation. So let's look at some things about Noah in Genesis 7. And maybe you can do those thing, same things and be different. Be different than all the people of this world that are only out for themselves. That care about the things of this world more than the things of God. So Genesis 7 to 1, it says, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. The first thing we're going to look at is Noah cleaned house. You notice where it says, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. And that word come is one of the Lord's favorite words. Stop and think about how amazing it is that Almighty God wants you to Come to him for salvation. Think how amazing it is that the Lord basically is in the ark and telling Noah and his family to come, get on the ark. He said, come thou and all thy house into the ark. He doesn't want only you. He wants you and your whole family. He even puts a desire in your heart after salvation to give your family the gospel. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Noah was called a preacher of righteousness. He got right with the Lord in clean towels. And I guarantee you, when he went to Shem and Ham and Japheth's room on that ark, they didn't have wicked posters on the wall. I'd say Noah wouldn't let them take their Xbox on there because of the wicked games that people play. Uh, the storm would have knocked the elect electricity out anyway. But he didn't even want the games in his presence on the boat. That verse said the Lord seen him righteous in his generation. Ask yourself this question. Do you stick out as righteous in this wicked generation that we're living in? If you're righteous, then you will stick out like a sore thumb. So Noah cleaned house. The Lord said, come thou and all thy house into the ark. The next thing is, Noah would steer clear of the sex perversion going on. There was a lot of sexual perversion going on during the days of Noah. You saw in chapter 6 how the sons of God got with the daughters of men. Noah has to make up his mind that he was going to stay true to his wife, Joan. I guess that could be her name, you know, Joan of Arc. But he wasn't trying to get with another woman. He definitely wasn't trying to get with another man. He wasn't trying to let his wife get with one of those sons of God. He also believed the Lord when he said he made them male and female. Genesis 127. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Noah knew there is only two genders, and that that they shouldn't get together. That you shouldn't get with the same gender. You shouldn't be attracted. A man shouldn't be attracted to a man. A woman shouldn't be attracted to a woman. No one knew that. And he steered clear of the sex perversion of his day. The Lord even told him that when he takes the animals for the ark to take them male and female. In Genesis 7, 2 and 3. He says, Of every clean beast shall shall take to thee by sevens the male and his female. Of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Of fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female. To keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. Imagine if when Noah got off of the ark that everyone decided they were just going to be homosexuals. There would be no people today. Imagine if Noah's three sons' wives just got with each other. There would be no people. God made you male and you need to marry a female. God told him to take the animals, male and female, to keep seed alive. If he just got male and male, then they would go extinct. You see, it's not God's plan. If you want to be a Noah in this generation, when you see these homosexuals, 
trannies, lesbians, and pedophiles, and other sex perverts, you should stick your finger out and say, it's nasty. That's nasty. If a man will kiss another man in the mouth, I wouldn't trust him with my dog if I had one. I don't have a dog, but if I had a dog, I wouldn't trust a man that's so nasty that he'll kiss another man in the mouth. I wouldn't trust that man with my dog. If he'll kiss another man in the mouth, he'll do just about anything. That's sick. If you want to eat, be a Noah in this generation, then you need to realize God made you and he can break you. The Lord says in verse 4, For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. He said, every living substance that I have made, God made you, and he can break you. Why would you worship and serve the creature more than the creator? Why would you think you know more than God? Why would you not prepare to meet your maker? All these people running around on earth eating, drinking, and being merry. They forgot about God. God made them. And now he will break them. In this case, in Genesis 7, drown them. If you're going to be a Noah in this generation, then you're going to have to realize there is a price for sin. You're going to have to realize that God is a consuming fire and it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Each time you sin, you need to remember that God sees it, and he hates it. God made you, and he can break you. He won't take away your salvation, but since you are a child of God, he will chasten you, and it will hurt. If you're going to be a Noah, then you're going to need to do what God says to do in the Bible. Genesis 7, 5, And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. Fear God and keep his commandments is the whole duty of man, as it says in Ecclesiastes. And that's what Noah did. In verse 6, it says, And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. Think about this. Noah was said to be a righteous man after 600 years. Talk about having longevity. Can you imagine what Noah knew after 600 years? Noah did not have a Bible. But he walked with God and he talked with God. Can you imagine the wisdom and the stories that he could share? Genesis 7:7. 7, 7, Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. So Noah had his house in order and they went in the ark with him. And I bet it was a good feeling to know that himself and his family was going to be safe from God's wrath on the earth. And if you're going to be a Noah of your generation then you're going to have to be patient. Genesis 7, 8, and 9. Of clean beasts and of beasts that are not clean, and of fowls and of every creeping thing that creepeth, and of everything that creepeth upon the earth, there went in two and two into Noah into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. Can you imagine the patience that Noah must have had? He preached 120 years for people to get right. He dealt with all these animals on the ark. Uh, I can't stand a deal with a pet dog, let alone a giraffe and an ostrich and a duckbill platypus and those mean-looking monkeys that take your food. You know, these type of animals. Noah was a patient man. Uh, Genesis 17 and 11, It came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 16th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up. And the windows of heaven were opened. So Noah couldn't have been a grumpy old 600 year old man. He had to be sweet being cooped up in the ark for so long. Or he'd have just killed them all. Imagine being in that ark and all of a sudden the great deep broke up. And you hear it being on top of that ark. Just beating on top of it. And you hear people screaming and begging to get back on the ark. If you're going to be a Noah of your generation then you need to get along with God and make some sacrifices for God. Genesis seven twelve says, And the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And forty days and forty nights is an important amount of time in the Bible. For these forty days and forty nights, the Lord is, was destroying the wickedness off the earth. All those wicked people, those sons of God, 
had come into the daughters of men and made these wicked people, a wicked race, a counterfeit race of people. For 40 days and 40 nights, the Lord is destroying the wickedness from off the earth. What if you took at least 40 days and 40 nights today, this starting now, and devoted it completely to the Lord? Also consider how Moses fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And during this time, he had one of the greatest revelations of all time from the Lord. No doubt this would have been a time of purification for Moses, a time when he got close to the Lord and got things right in his own life. Exodus 34, 28, And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water, and he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. So when Moses got the Ten Commandments, he had been separating himself Fasting and praying and seeking God for 40 days and 40 nights. Also consider Elijah, one of the greatest prophets, went 40 days and 40 nights fasting. 1 Kings 19.8 And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights. The Lord Jesus Christ himself went 40 days and 40 nights without eating it says in Matthew 4, 2, when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. How great would it be if you put your worldly hobbies aside for about a little over a month and seek God, get in the Bible and pray. <coughs> you don't have to fast 40 days and 40 nights. But what if you just completely sought the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights? But while you're doing this for 40 days, you're going to be bothered by spiritual wickedness. Forces of evil will present themselves to you just like Goliath did for 40 days. You know the story of David and Goliath before David fought Goliath. It says in 1 Samuel 17, 16, And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself for 40 days. If you're going to be a Noah then you need to realize you may not have much company. Paul said, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? You may not have many friends being a Bible believer. You may find that you don't have many people to talk to about what you just read in your daily Bible reading and you think it's the most exciting thing in the world. You may find some amazing truth and you go and tell somebody about it and you're so excited and they're just like, Oh, okay. Or they just kind of just sit there and look at you. They're not really excited about it like you are and i mean you don't know what's going on in somebody's heart and mind they may not react outwardly but maybe the truth did get to them like it did to you but for the most part people they don't care about the bible it could be lonely being a bible believer all you may have is your family May, you may have your church members, but the average Christian church member doesn't want to fellowship with you about the Bible because they don't read the Bible. They don't know anything about the Bible. But Noah just has about eight people, including himself. So if you think that your numbers are low, I mean, I mean that's eight people that he's got. That's it. Genesis seven thirteen, In the selfsame day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with him into the ark. So you have only eight people getting in the ark and a bunch of animals. Genesis seven fourteen through 16. They and every beast after his kind and all the cattle after their kind and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind and every fowl after his kind and every bird of every sort. And they went in into Noah and to the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. So once all the animals and Noah and his family get in the ark, the Lord himself shuts him in. So no giant walking around is going to be able to get that door open, as strong as those guys are. They ain't going to be able to pry that door open because the Lord shut them in. It's just like your salvation. When you get saved, you're locked in. You can't get out of your salvation. And no one can come in and take away your salvation. 
your holiness grandma might talk you out of your salvation, but she can't take it away. Once you're in, you're in. Genesis 7:17, 7, And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lifted up above the earth. That's like me. I got shut in, and then one day the Lord is going to lift me up above the earth. I'm going out in the rapture because I've been born again. I'm sealed unto the day of redemption. The day of redemption is when I get my new body at the rapture. Genesis 7, 18, the waters prevailed and were great, or increased greatly upon the earth and the ark went up on the face of the waters. So the waters prevailed over the earth just like the fire is going to prevail over the earth in the future. Genesis 7, 19, the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. So God had it all covered. There was no mountain high enough for any mighty man to climb up for safety. Why do you think Noah had to put the birds on the ark? Once the great deeps were broken up, it would knock a bird out of the sky, and there would be no place for him to land, not even the high hills or the mountains or the tallest tree. There would be no place for him to get food. Genesis 7.20 Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. All the places where these people were sacrificing to other gods and everything else, these places were wiped out. And there ain't no telling what was on this earth before the flood. I'd be scared to walk the streets of this world before the flood. It was so wicked that God had to cover the whole thing, even the mountains. And there was only eight people that got on the ark. Out of billions of people, eight people got on the ark. Can you imagine the wickedness of this time? Completely wicked. It ain't like living in the Bible Belt. It ain't like you got, you know, a church here and a church there. And, you know, your grandma's a big Christian and she's taught you right. And most, even wicked men that you see, you know, if you live in the Bible Belt, their grandma taught them right. And, you know, you talk up to them about the Bible. They, they're they like, yeah, my grandma told me about that or something. It wouldn't have been like that then. These people were flat out wicked. And Noah and his family was the only ones that got on the ark. There was no telling what type of sin was going on. Genesis 7.22 And all, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in the dry land, died. The same breath that God blew into man's nostrils, the same breath stops. It all started with God breathing into Adam's nostrils, the breath of life, in Genesis 2. And now look what man has caused. God gave them breath. He can take away breath. Genesis 7, 23, And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven. And they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive and they that were with him in the ark. So God killed animals. He didn't try to save them. He killed them. He doesn't have a weird animal fetish like people do today. Animals do not have as much of rights as humans. They should not. One man is worth more than every whale. If you got every whale over here on the left side... And you got one man over here on the right side. And there's a button for each one. And whichever button you press, all those whales die or the man dies. I'm going to hit the whales. I'm going to let all the whales die before I let a man die. Because a person has an eternal soul that's going to go to heaven or hell. You're starting to think stupid like the world when you think that the animals are equal with man or that animals may even be superior to man that is very very dumb that is the foolish wisdom of this world you've been brainwashed by if you think that a whale or an eagle or any type of animal is is worth as much as a human life i'm not saying you should be mean to animals obviously but m m a man a person their life is worth more than, than all the animals. 
So God killed animals. Uh, he's, he's not for the PETA stuff. And the only way I'm for the PETA stuff is if it stands for people eating tasty animals. Because I like to eat animals. Uh, Genesis 7.24 says, And the waters prevailed upon the earth in 150 days. So just like the waters prevailed, the waters, God used waters to defeat the earth. He's much more powerful than what they call Mother Nature. Mother Nature is nothing compared to God. He used waters, and they prevailed. In the future, He's going to use fire, and it's going to prevail. But this has just been a quick study on Genesis chapter 7, on being a Noah in this untoward generation.